Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna go over spline dynamics, couple of basic use cases for them. Uh, we'll create some kind of like wires as well as uh, a balloon uh, and kind of create the string for that. So starting with the basics here, I just have two cubes and I want to connect them or, or create a spline that goes between them. Uh, and I can use my pen tool for that. I did go into a front view um, and there we go. Just wanted to create two points. Now, you do want to be a little bit precise if precision is going to, you know, make a difference to you. If you want it to be very accurate and make this as straight as possible, you could go in, you know, scale the points so they're perfectly flat or um, copy and paste their uh, positions. But for our purposes, this will be just fine. In fact, we don't need the cubes for the moment here. Um, I do want to point out that you need to have multiple points going across this. So just the two isn't going to be sufficient. Um, rather than try and add the points as I was going, I can make them equally spaced by adjusting my intermediate points type here. So I will set this to uniform, um, which if I did have a curve, it'd be a little bit easier to see here, but it's essentially going to just split this uniformly based on however many uh, points I want here. So I'll add something like 20. And then what I'm going to do is do a current state to object, which is essentially going to bake in that uh, uniform points, it's going to make those points actually real and not just kind of the intermediate points. So there we go. Now we can do some spline dynamics. And spline dynamics aren't actually under simulation where you might expect to find dynamics. Uh, they are under hair tags. And the two we will be using today are hair constraint and spline dynamics. Starting with just spline dynamics though. Right. Not sure why it moved. There we go. Just rewind it. What we want to do uh, is fix some points here just to kind of see some things and how they work. If you just hit play, it's going to fall. Uh, if you go to the properties tab is where you can adjust the individual properties and whether or not you want points to be able to move or not. So if I just want to make a wire, um, all I have to do is select the edge points, hit set uh, next to my fixed. And now when I hit play, you'll see we get a nice simulation of kind of a wire, a rope, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there we have it. And so if all you need is a quick wire between two objects, that's the way to do it. Um, you can adjust some of these other properties. The one I prefer or like the most is drag since it'll slow things down. Um, some of these other ones make a little bit more of a difference than others. So you'll just need to experiment, but um, drag is a good way to kind of slow this simulation down, which is going to be important later uh, for the balloon. Now, the problem with this as it stands right now is that these points are set. You can't move them. Uh, so what we need to do is tell these points to follow another object. And that's where the hair constraint comes in. Uh, I want to make sure I release these points and just kind of clear them so they're no longer fixed. And I can test this out just by, yep, playing it and seeing that. So I'm going to bring back my cubes. And on my spline now, I will go back to hair tags and add hair constraint. Um, I will also just duplicate it by holding down control or command and, and dragging so that I have two of them, one for each cube, because uh, you can only constrain a single point to a single, well, um, however many points you want, but to a single object in these hair constraint tags. So let's see, this is the first cube. So I'll drag that into my object. And now what I need to do is also go into point mode here so I can select the actual point I want to use and then hit set. Oops, there we go. And so now if I hit play, we can see that one is constrained and we can see this is going back and forth kind of kind of nicely. We're going to repeat that process for our next drag the cube in there, select the point, make sure we hit set and rewind and we should be good to go. So now we have those constrained, but now if I was to move or animate this, you can see that it's going to go with it. Uh, I also want to point out that you very quickly and easily can see how this is breaking down. 
um, you can see the individual kind of segments here. So we definitely need to be careful of that because you know the intermediate points type isn't going to influence this. It's the number of points um, on our spline. So you generally want to go with more than you think you need um, because if you don't have enough, you kind of have to start over, make a new spline, and and you know do all the constraints uh, again. So let's see how we can do this on a balloon. Get rid of my cubes. Show our balloon. It does have a little bit of an animation on it, and all this balloon is uh, is a sphere with an FFD, and then just a little cone for the you know where the knot would be. And I'm actually going to hide that FFD again. I'm going to create my spline just like we did before. I'll go into one of my side views just to try and make this relatively straight and the length can be whatever you like. Hit escape. Back to my perspective view. I'm going to position this where it needs to go. Uh, I will also center the axis. All right, looks good there. Looks good there. We need to add points and I'll do that just like I did before. Once again, gonna add more than I think I need. So um, we'll just get crazy here and go with 40. Same process as before. Gonna start by adding our spline dynamics tag to this and then our hair constraint. Once we've done that, I'm gonna go into point mode. Oops, I did not. Connect to object, current state to object. So needed to do that. Now we should have all our points, perfect. Add our tags back in. Don't know why I keep trying to go to my dynamics tags. They are not there. Awesome. Go into lines here to select that topmost point for our constraint. And I'm gonna use the cone for this. So that will be the object. All right, since it's at the bottom that way, you know, that's where it would be tied around. Uh, and that should be it. Let's see what we got. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, what I found with this um, is that two things. One, you really do want the spline to be at the very bottom of this, okay? And since mine isn't, it kind of, you know, goes through. So just keep that in mind, All right? If I undid the hair constraint, I could move the um, spline down to fix that. Uh, and then the other thing is, you know, I feel like it's just moving perhaps a bit too much. You know, I like the motion, um, you know, really natural, interesting, but it's just a little bit too much for me. And that's where this drag property I talked about earlier can come in. Is it just kind of slows things down a little bit. All right. And then all I've left to do is create some geometry from that spline, whether it's using the sweep or a hair material, or I don't know, maybe there's another way. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you want to see, just let me know and take care.